Hello and welcome to Simplify TV, the web series and podcast for agencies, brands, marketers, and media buyers. I'm David McBee. Our guest today is John Chan, CEO and co-founder of 2X Growth Agency. John is renowned for his expertise in web, UX design, and digital marketing. Born in Hong Kong and raised in Vancouver, John dropped out of university at the age of 19 to start his own web design consultancy. Since then, he has worked for several prestigious companies, including UBC and Basecamp, before co-founding 2X Growth Agency. The agency specializes in helping e-commerce and D2C brands grow and scale with paid ads and ad creative development. Under John's leadership, 2X Growth Agency has managed over $6 million of ad spend and helped generate $30 million in revenue for their clients. John, welcome to Simplify TV. Thank you so much for having me, David. I'm so excited to have you here, John. Uh, dropping out of school at 19, managing $6 million in ad spend, that's all very impressive. So I wanna ask, do you have some insights into how you effectively manage those big ad budgets for maximum ROI? For sure. I would. I think that ironically, sometimes managing larger budgets is in some ways easier to managing small, uh, smaller accounts. And that was one of the first lessons we learned as we got into the media buying world, because when we first started, we we're tiptoeing into managing smaller brands, only to find that in a programmatic world, media, uh, budgets generally means that you have more um, data to work with. And with data, you can make better and more informed decisions. And so... Um, and, and the other thing is that when uh, when I think about growing different brands or when I work with new founders and different business owners, a large part of what I ask about is what are the individual strengths of the core business and what are things that are already working? And so when you generally have a business that have an established budget, it's because there's data and history that's already been proven. And so it's kind of like you know, looking at a slice of uh, history and seeing back what has already worked. And so taking a company or taking a brand that's already done, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars in sales and growing that in multiples um, is generally sometimes easier than working with a fresh start or the fresh brand. You know, that actually reminds me, someone asked me, how long do I need to run this campaign before, you know, I know if it's working or not. And my, uh, my answer to that was kind of doesn't depend on length of the campaign as much as it depends on number of ad impressions, you know? So if you've got a very small number of impressions a month, you might need to run it for three or four months before you get enough data. Whereas if you have a million impressions in the first two weeks, that's a lot of impressions and you can already start making some adjustments. Do you agree? I would say largely yes. And it's it's very tricky, especially with uh, app platforms nowadays, where it's very... Um, it's a black box when you're running an ad campaign and it's using machine learning to find out what are the different demographics, <clears throat> excuse me, or um, whether if it's creatives are working or it's time of day or devices, there are a lot of, or, or ad inventory, there's a lot of variables that are at play. And so sometimes you even find that when you're running an ad account or run ad campaign and things aren't working in a particular period, it's not that the campaign didn't work. It's understanding that there are variables at play that you need to make adjustments, or sometimes it's even not the set of combinations that you're running at all, you just sometimes need a reset because machine learning can sometimes have early indicators that are leading the campaign astray. So if you had a few early sales that were a random sampling of a particular demographic or a particular um, audience set, um, and it was going down a particular path in optimization, and it was just the wrong path, sometimes it's actually not the system's fault. You just have to reset it, but it's not, it's hard to see or hard to diagnose. And so um, I would say that it's, it's very, uh, machine learning is great. AI powered systems are great. App platforms are great, um, but there's sometimes it could lead your platforms astray, and, and and it really comes down to it depends, which is often not a great answer for how to navigate a particular uh, situation. All right, so how do you catch it? How do you know if the AI or the machine learning has taken it down the wrong path? It's a um, good question because um, it's not always obvious. And so if you, um, I think one example that I can think of is that one of the brands that we audited um, earlier this year was uh, they're doing they're doing $40 million. It's, uh, it's a large brand and they're selling in a category where one of their um, shopping campaigns had 3,000 SKUs. And because the 
system was trying to focus on um, a few set of SKUs, you'll notice that all the spend went towards just a few set of colors or a few sizes, even though that, that wasn't necessarily the most optimal scenario. And so in a scenario where you could see that, then you could manually intervene and say, you know what, let me restructure the campaign or break out my um, your, your, your shopping feed so that you could delegate and allocate budget towards a few uh, specific areas. But in the absence of being able to see that, it's really hard to diagnose. And so oftentimes when you think about how do you set up um, to see what your optimizations are, are doing, it's looking at the breakdowns that are available to you. And so on some platforms, their segments have that naturally built in. Other times you have to manually structure that, whether if it's your ad groups on a, on a shopping campaign or on a, on a Google ad campaigns or setting up your ad account structure on Meta where you have um, the specific interests or built or audience sets or ad sets built in so that you have the adjustments that are available to you. So we think a lot about structure as a way of the levers that you're setting yourself up for. That is great advice. It's very clear that you have a solid understanding of running marketing campaigns for e-commerce and D2C. Do you have any top tips or strategies that you recommend for those kinds of companies? Yeah, I think the thing that we see more often than not is when media buyers and um, brand owners uh, follow specific practices um, because they're, um, they're best practices. And so I think what good media buyers what separates good media buyers from from um from mediocre ones are um understanding that when or actually this not just media buying in any field really is that when you follow best practices it's the baseline for what you should set and it's how you expect things to work but it's knowing how to break the rules when things don't work and so taking a, comp a company or a campaign from um not working to working or a campaign that's working to excelling really boils down to knowing what rules to break and what rules um to not break and so for a company a company or a campaign that's at scale um it's usually understanding uh knowing how to break apart and restructuring a campaign so as an example, um, most campaign structures typically start with you know like a, a three set or a four set of campaigns, let's say in, in a meta. Um, but at what point do you transition from taking a campaign and then breaking it into multiple ones? Um, and that really boils down to understanding your skew mix and your um, your hero products and knowing which. Uh, and thinking through how do you strategize your first order versus your secondary and third orders and whether if it's actually media buying that should be leading that conversation or do you have a second or third channel that follows up with it and so knowing your 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 skew mix and knowing how your different channels and the different levers that are available to your business interplay with how do you scale your business um is it's a very situational thing but it's a it's a question that you can't really follow best practices for and you have to ask in each scenario that shows up it sounds a little more like uh, an art than a science. And how do you teach that, right? It's a bit of both, right? And I think that's why if you look at um, media buying agencies or if you look at consultants, there, there's a time and place for them because they have visibility across different platforms. And you're, when you're a brand owner, it's it's hard not to be pigeonholed into that one scenario. And so even if you're just asking for different advice or different opinions and see what other people are seeing across the markets, it helps you think in ways that you might not would have thought about just because you don't have those patterns available to you. And with app platforms changing that quickly or in markets and uh, environments start changing very quickly, it's always hard to know, am I setting up things in the most optimal way and has the market shifted or has techniques shifted? Um, and that's always gonna be a challenge for brand owners. Yeah. All right, let's shift the gears a little bit and let's just talk about this evolving landscape of digital marketing and all the trends that are going on. What do you foresee uh, as important to agencies in the next few years? Yeah, that's a good question because I think generally in my own career, whether if it's media buying or something else, I always try to focus on the skill sets that don't change because if you follow trends and you follow, trends are important and, and keeping up to date with the landscape is very important. Um, but in terms of training and also both from running and operating your own business and also from training your staff, um, it's to it's important to separate what skill sets or things that change over time that becomes obsolete as you know environments change. For example, AI tools are coming out and it's changing the uh, the, the status quo for how do you develop and train uh, junior and and uh, intermediate staff versus um, learning certain skills that that are rooted in, in 
psychology and behavior or skill sets that don't really change. So if you think about learning and understanding, developing um, skills around direct response marketing, that hasn't gone out of vogue since the last, you know, however many years and decades. And so those are skill sets that are important to continue to keep up. And that way, when you're training staff and understanding um, your your business, um, you don't, you don't, be, it's, 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 the work change, the markets change, um, but you don't develop skills that are obsolete or train staff that becomes obsolete. Um, I'll give one other example here. So one of the things that we started doing in the last year was that um, rather than training our, 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 our media buyers and creative strategists on, on design skills or um, um, or even copywriting skills, we develop and teach them frameworks to identify that if you have AI tools generate the first pass, how do you evaluate and critique which ones do you select and which ones do you develop? And so it's developing the taste for de determining how to make improvements rather than how do you go from uh, net, starting from scratch or net zero because that's largely going to go away or becomes more progressively less important as time progresses. That's amazing stuff. Thank you so much. Um, before I let you go, I do want to ask you my favorite question, which is, do you have a podcast or a book that you feel has been instrumental in your success? For sure. Um, I think there's a few things that I would suggest from a podcast perspective. Um, recently, I've been really enjoying the Operators podcast, where it's basically a bunch of DDC uh, operators, um, you know, eight-figure brands, nine-figure brands that are basically shooting, you know, are talking about what's what's changed the environment and how they're approaching upcoming campaigns. And that kind of information is super relevant because like we talked about as and environments change, um, they're usually at the forefront because they they had a, their, their stakes are much higher. And so seeing that kind of like exposed on a podcast is super helpful. Um, from a book or, or a concept that I've been studying, um, something that was really inter instrumental to me as a marketer um, come from the design world, um, which was jobs to be done. Um, I, at least I was trained in that environment. Um, and this comes from um, the gentleman at uh, the Rewired Group, Bob Mesta. And it was about understanding the customer's journey and understand, and, and it's a different approach to thinking about um, how do you think about your customers and the way that they shop, where traditionally you think about demographics and psychographics, and they shift the narrative around what are the selection process, whether if it's in your product category or not, of the switching decisions that people make, uh, whether if for consumer products or, or software products, where uh, what drives them to go um, seek out a product solutions in the first place. So that was also very instrumental to me when I think about um, angle development or marketing techniques. Those both sound like valuable tools for any agency owner. Thank you. What is uh, what is the best way for viewers to learn more about you? For sure. Um, so you can find me on Twitter. I'm uh, JTC Chan, J-T-C-C-H-A-N, or you can find us on 2x.agency um, and just reach out. Uh, I'd love to chat and learn more about your businesses. Um, and um, yeah. And thank you, John, for being my guest on Simplify TV. Thanks for having me. This is a really fun chat. And thank you guys for watching. Simplify TV is sponsored by Simplify, helping you to maximize relevance and multiply results with our industry-leading media buying and workflow solutions. For more information, visit simply.fi. Thanks for joining us today. I'm David McBee. Be awesome, and we'll see you next time.